Reports of insect-borne disease increased threefold between 2004 and 2016, but ticks accounted for 77% of those cases. Here are 10 ways that a tick can kill you. And before you start watching this, please subscribe. It really makes a difference. Number 10. The Bourbon Virus February 2015 An otherwise healthy man in Kansas becomes infected with a new type of virus after a number of tick bites. He rushed to the hospital with a fever, elevated blood pressure, and a rash, nausea, weakness, and diarrhea. Nine days later, he had trouble breathing and was put on oxygen support. Organ failure began to occur and the man died 11 days later. The virus was called the Bourbon Virus after the name of the Kansas County where this man lived. It had never been spotted in the U.S. before, according to the CDC. Number 9. Lyme Disease, the granddaddy of tick-related illnesses, with symptoms and signs that include facial palsy, inflammation of the brain and spinal cord, and severe nerve pain, it's not something you want to pick up. But what many continue to ask about Lyme disease is why did it suddenly surface in Old Lyme, Connecticut? Some believe the answer lies on a mysterious government laboratory on nearby Plum Island. Run by a former germ warfare expert from Nazi Germany, the facility experimented with tick-borne illnesses in the 1970s. If a tick were to escape, the prevailing winds and migratory patterns for birds would land directly on Old Lyme, Connecticut. Number 8. Alpha Gal Can you imagine not eating red meat for the rest of your life? If you're a big meat eater, the prospect of never having a burger again could be downright depressing. Well, it turns out there's a new condition that's being spread by ticks called Alpha Gal. It happened to Louise Danzig, a nurse from Long Island. In the summer of 2014, she went to her local farmer's market and had a hamburger. All of a sudden, her lips and tongue got swollen and her airway began to close. It turns out she was now allergic to red meat. It's bizarre, and it goes against everything that most allergists know about these types of reactions. The bad news is, it's spreading. The newest hotspots, Duluth, Minnesota, and New Hampshire. And Long Island still remains top of the list with 100 cases in 2017 alone. Number 7. Powassan June 6, 2017, Freeport, Maine. Cases of a new tick-borne illness are being reported. And unlike Lyme's disease, it's not a bacteria, it's a virus. There's no known cure, and the symptoms are much more severe. It's called Powassan, and it can be transmitted in just minutes and quickly reaches a victim's brain, leaving them susceptible to long-term neurological damage. Powassan can kill you or cause permanent disability. There's no vaccine, no antibiotics, no medications, and no treatment possible. Take, for example, the case of a five-month-old Connecticut infant who had contracted Powassan in 2017. Brain scans of the infant in the weeks and months to come showed softening and scarring in many key areas of his brain. In other words, Powassan is a deadly neurological agent. There is no cure. Number 6. Borrelia miramote A newcomer on the tick scene, it's a spirochete and resembles a lot of the symptoms from Lyme disease, fever, headache, fatigue, joint and muscle pain, etc. It also causes TBRF, a tick-borne relapsing fever, which the CDC has linked to sleeping in rusted cabins, particularly in mountainous areas of the western U.S. It starts out with a high fever, about 103, headache, muscle, and joint aches. But the symptoms have a pattern lasting of fever for three days, followed by seven days without fever, followed by another three days of fever. Without antibiotics, this process can repeat several times. And because it's so new to the scene, long-term neurological damage is yet to be determined. Number 5. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, also known as Blue Disease, is a lethal and frequently reported illness around the world. A rash first appears two to five days after the onset of fever, and it's often pretty subtle. It's small, flat, pink, non-itchy spots on the wrists, forearms, and ankles. These spots turn pale when you apply pressure and eventually they become raised on the skin. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever can cause a lot of long-term health problems, including partial paralysis of your lower extremities, hearing loss, loss of bladder control, and movement disorders. If you can avoid getting Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, you probably should. Number 4. SFTS 
There's a new tick in town, and it just arrived in New Jersey in 2017. The East Asian tick, also known as a longhorn or bush tick, also carries a deadly virus called SFTS, which stands for Severe Fear with Thrombocytopenia Syndrome. Thrombocytopenia means a low blood platelet count, according to the Mayo Clinic. Like its cousins, Ebola and yellow fever, it's a hemorrhagic fever, which has fatality rates that range from 12% to as high as 30% in some areas. This is definitely one to keep you up at night. It can also reproduce by essentially cloning itself, allowing it to multiply very quickly. It feeds on the blood of a variety of mammals, including humans. And person-to-person -person transmission was not noted in the early reports, but it has since been documented. Uh-oh. Number three, tick paralysis. Tick paralysis is the only tick-borne disease that is not caused by infectious organism. It's actually a neurotoxin produced in the tick salivary gland. After attaching, the engorged tick transmits the toxin to its host. Here's how you experience it as a victim. First, within two to seven days, you'll have some weakness in both legs that progresses slowly to paralysis. The paralysis then ascends to the trunk, the arms, and the head within hours, and it may lead to respiratory failure and death. The terrifying part is that 46 tick species carry this neurotoxin. The good news is with this neurotoxin, if you discover the tick on your body and remove it, you're usually safe within a few hours or a few days. Number two, tick-borne encephalitis. Tick-borne encephalitis or TBE is a viral infectious disease involving the central nervous system. It's often confused with meningitis or encephalitis. Long-lasting or permanent neuropsychiatric consequences are observed in 10 to up to 20% of infected patients. This virus can infect a range of hosts, including birds, rodents, carnivores, horses, and of course, humans. Russia and Europe report approximately 5 to 7,000 cases annually, and the numbers are growing. The disease is incurable once it's manifested, so there are no drugs and there's no hope. Symptomatic brain damage will often require hospitalization and supportive care, and long-term prognosis is not so great. Number one, the Heartland virus. The virus was first proven to infect humans in June 2009, when two farmers living 60 miles apart presented with fever, fatigue, diarrhea, and thrombocytopenia. Remember that from SFTS? It's low blood platelet count. As of 2017, only five states have reported 20 infections, Arkansas, Indiana, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Tennessee. But hold on, when they tested samples of wild animals, it looks like Heartland has already spread to 13 states, Florida, Texas, Georgia, with Ebola and yellow fever in the hemorrhagic family. Could the Heartland virus actually destroy the Heartland itself? From bloody hemorrhagic fevers to allergies to hamburgers? Man, I don't think it's worth going out to the woods anymore. Hey guys, please subscribe. It could be your good deed for the day.